And the wise man stakes his claim on the fact that what Jesus is saying is true. Therefore, I'm going to lean everything on Jesus and trust that he's going to establish my life in such a way that my life begins to look like his life. And even though it's difficult building on rock, and even though the words of Jesus, they often go against common wisdom, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go all in on Jesus. I'm just going to keep on digging, and I'm going to keep on establishing myself on Jesus because I want the kingdom life, and Jesus says that this is the only way to get it, so I'm going to trust him. I'm not just going to trust something that he did. I'm going to trust him. That's the wise man. He finds his rock, and he builds there. All his eggs are in one basket, and that basket is labeled Jesus Christ. But what about the man that Jesus calls a fool? Who knows what the Greek word for fool is? It's moros. Who who knows what word I'm going to say next? Moron. Now, I've been trying to think all week. There's a movie where some Italian guy, uh, he says, uh, he's a moron. Who knows what I'm, does anybody, does that ring a bell or did I make that up? There's a movie where he says to somebody, "Uh, that guy, he's a moron. It it has nothing to do with the sermon, okay? So just... (laughs) Just remove that from your mind. Jesus is saying that people that don't entrust themselves to him entirely are morons. He says they're morons. They're fools. They're idiots. Why? Why is the man a moron? By the way, I would never say this. So don't don't email Bishop Palmer and say, hey, Pastor Meshach stood up and said, I would never, I'm too nice to do that. But Jesus He knows something about reality so that he can say, this is foolish behavior, this is wise behavior. Why is the man a moron? What makes him a fool? Well, here's what I think Jesus is getting at. If the wise man was wise because he he understood the offer, he understood that it was all or nothing, the foolish man is a fool because he didn't understand. Or if he did understand, he didn't trust. He didn't put all his his eggs in one basket. And... Can I tell you, after 15 years of pastoral ministry, this is what I would say defines the majority of those who call themselves Christians. We don't have all of our eggs in one basket. And I'm not just talking about parishioners, I'm talking about preachers as well. I'm talking about myself and the temptation to diversify my life. We... We believe in God, we believe in Jesus, but we trust ourselves. Am I off base, sir? We believe in God, we believe in Jesus, but when it comes down to who we trust, the majority of us, we trust ourselves. And when we're living that way, Jesus says, you're being foolish. We trust ourselves to make the right decisions about how to build our lives, how to manage our money, how to manage our relationships, how our families should be raised, indeed how our churches should be run. Believe in God, but trust ourselves. See, the wise man built his house on one rock. The foolish man built his house on sand. But what does that mean? What does sand signify? What is sand anyways? Does anyone know know what sand is? What is sand? Sand is what happens as a rock erodes. So over the process of time and weathering and water impacting it, a rock begins to break down until you go to the beach and there's sand. So sand is literally tiny rocks. Tiny rocks. So get what Jesus is saying. The wise man built his house on one rock, on one person's word, on one person's teaching, on one person's life. The moron built his life on many tiny rocks or many people's words, many people's teachings, many people's instructions, many people's advice, many people's lives. What does this look like in real life? 
Well, here's what the fool does. When it comes to finances, the fool decides. He decides, I'm going to go to Dave Ramsey for finances. But then the fool gets married, and when he gets married, he doesn't think that Dave Ramsey really knows much about marriage, and so he goes to Dr. Laura Berman. And then him and his wife have kids, and so the fool decides, you know what, I don't think Dr. Laura Berman knows much about raising children or parenting, but these two Instagram gurus know a lot about parenting, so let me bring them into my life. And then the fool decides that he wants to be more politically active, and so his favorite news channel then teaches him on how to be a good citizen and how to think politically. And then he decides, you know what, I better get in church, so the fool decides, let me bring in Jesus on board. Sand. Sandy existence. That's what it means to build your life on sand. It means you're building your life on many tiny rocks, many people's words. It means that you're taking direction from many sources, sources that will eventually pull in different direction when the storm comes. And the storm will come. The storm will come. It may come in the form of an economic recession. And when the economic recession comes, the financial guru will say, listen, it's time to tighten up. It's time to shore up that nest egg. And what Jesus is going to say? Jesus is going to say, listen, it's better to give than to receive. The foundation starts separating. The storm's going to come in terms of, in terms of, uh, of, of, of politics and the world going crazy like it did during 2020. And our, and our politics are advising us to, to be very cautious about our neighbors that put this sign in your yard or that sign in your yard. You should be very cautious about those people, our politics say. Then Jesus says, actually, you should, you should love your neighbor as yourself. The, the sand is shifting. As we're parenting and we're raising our kids, the world will give this advice and Jesus will give that advice. That advice. The sand is shifting. That's what makes the fool a fool, is because the foundation of his life, it's shifting like sand in different directions when outside pressure impacts it. And that's, way, that's the way the house of his life will begin to tumble down because he has too many masters. He's decided that he's smart enough to know who to trust in different situations. And Jesus says, you're a fool. You're a fool. And don't get it twisted, Jesus will, he will be in your life as a tiny grain of sand because he loves you and he wants to be near to you. But he's there looking at you and thinking, this is foolish. This man is putting me on par with everybody else when I told him that I am the way and I am the truth and I am the life. Oh, if he would just entrust himself to me, he would see that I have the wisdom and capacity to lead his life in such a way that it will become strong and sustainable and beautiful and powerful. But he's a fool. 